Magic in Montreal, dominance for Real Salt Lake, and the biggest controversy of week two, next on The Daily. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily here with Andrew Wiebe. I'm Nick Furshaw, looking back at the best highlights from week two of the Major League Soccer season, starting with a big debut for the Montreal Impact at home, their first ever game at home in MLS. Andrew, you were up there on a great crowd, a great atmosphere. What'd you see? Yeah, they got the week started off on the right foot. 58,912 Montrealers, as they're called, packed Olympic Stadium for a for what looked like what was going to be a win for the better part of about 70 minutes until Dominic Odero scored. Davey Arnault with a huge goal for that franchise, a great late run of the box, a nice deft header to the back post. It exploded, it looked like they had it in the bag, and then of course Dominic Odero and Sebastian Grazzini hooked up and uh, ruined that. But on the whole, a great night for them, or, or day, or afternoon, or however you want to call it. Um, but a, a good step forward for that organization. It'll be interesting to see how they maintain that momentum going through the season. Yeah, it started in the afternoon, probably went long into the night for Montreal. You mentioned Dominic Oduro, the first goal of the season for him. He mentioned on Extra Time Radio last week, 12 goals this season. Well, he's got 11 more to go. Next up, we've got five perfect teams remaining in Major League Soccer. That means two wins in two games. And I got to say, the most unlikely, maybe the Colorado Rapids. They went to PPL Park on Sunday and got a big win over the Philadelphia Union. Oscar Perea and his team still undefeated two weeks in the season. Yeah, even more impressively, Nick, they did so down a man. Jeff Baronowitz getting his second yellow and getting sent off. But uh, although Philly had the chances in the first half especially, they could not finish those off. And Tony Cassio gets his first goal in MLS. Knocks down Chris Albright, or as that's the way Philadelphia would see it, of course. Colorado fans a little bit more forgiving of that contact and goes in and rifles it past Zach McMath. McMath, though, not his best game once again, but uh, if you're Colorado, you have to be encouraged. Jaime Castrillon looks good. Omar Cummings looks active early on. A, a good start to the season for them. And for the Philadelphia Union, winless in their first two games. One of the teams that's still unbeaten, that's Real Salt Lake. A 2-0 win over the New York Red Bulls at Rio Tinto Stadium. They've owned New York over the last uh, Yeah, it looks like years. Thierry Henry was right on the button when, with his comments last mm -hmm. week saying that RSL is so far ahead of him. Uh, Fabian Espindola, speaking of people who own New York, five goals in his last six games against the Red Bulls, gets the first one for them. Luis Gill cleans up a mess in the box to get the second, and they run away with this one. Looking like one of the best teams in the league early on. Yeah, they were definitely number one in last week's power rankings. You can find the uh, week two edition on Tuesday on MLSsoccer.com. Three other teams vying for that top spot and still perfect on the season. The Houston Dynamo, Sporting Kansas City, and the Vancouver Whitecaps, but we're waiting for each of those three teams to get a real challenge. So yeah, they, they haven't exactly beat the cream of the crop yet. Sporting KC knocking off two Eastern yeah. Conference teams in D.C. and New England. And of course, you have to remember New England was down to 10 men as well, so that's not exactly a fair fight. Uh, Houston, San Jose, and Chivas. Chivas struggling mightily early on, and then Vancouver, obviously, possibly the two teams that many expect to be fighting near the bottom. And, Montreal and Chivas as well. So we'll see how they develop as the, as the year goes on. Still, the Vancouver Whitecaps, a big congratulations to Jay Demerit, who got his first goal in MLS over the weekend. Next up, two teams bouncing back from some midweek disappointments in the CONCACAF Champions League. Let's start with the Seattle Sounders, Andrew, who on Saturday uh, came back against Toronto FC, a 3-1 win in the regular season game sort of making amends for that big loss down at Santos in yeah. the midweek. Once again, a good crowd up there, but David Estrada coming out and, and really showing what he can do early on this season. He's got all but one goal for the Sounders early on in CCL and MLS play, and he gets the hat trick here and a couple good finishes from him. I think he was disappointed in the first half maybe to not have finished a few opportunities he had, but Seattle bounces back. That 6-1 loss to Santos Laguna looking a little bit more in the past, a little bit more of an outlier, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes for them against MLS competition now that they're out of the CONCACAF Champions League. People wondering, where's Eddie Johnson? Where's yeah. Eddie Johnson? Uh, they have their answer in David Estrada so far up in Seattle. Uh, another big striker on the move, Robbie Keane had two goals for the LA Galaxy as they get their first win of the season over the weekend over DC United. And uh, another team in action, FC Dallas gets a 1-1 draw against the Portland Timbers. Blas Perez gets his first goal of the season for FC Dallas. Yeah, a very impressive uh, poacher's goal, but Brian Levy, the guy that fed him for that, looked very good in this game, a homegrown product for FC Dallas. That's the type of thing that they need to happen. They've, For a lot of years, they've said, hey, our, our academy is the best in MLS, and now they need to start seeing production from those guys. For, so to have him come in and, and fill that gap and really produce for them is a big good sign going forward. And on the Portland side, Darlington Nagby gets the goal, and John Spencer, the head coach of the Portland Timbers, actually had a nice in-game call. You can find that on MLSsoccer.com and PortlandTimbers.com. 
One last bit of news we want to take a look at, and that's maybe the biggest controversy of week two. We had a couple this weekend about players not getting on the field, some star players, both with the Philadelphia Union and DC United. What do you make of it? Uh, probably the most interesting of the bunch is Danny Califf in Philadelphia disputing Peter Novak's assessment that he had a knee injury that forced him to be on the bench in that game. Kind of funny that that's a similar situation that happened last year with Sebastian Latua and a lower body injury that he said he didn't have and that uh, the that management kind of harped on for much of the year. So we'll see how those two guys kind of clear the air and move forward from that. And then DC United, both their both their designated players on the bench, yeah. Hamdi Salih and Bronco Boscovich not playing a role. Boscovich playing came on in the 60th minute, obviously when. DC was desperate for goals, but nothing for Salihi. So we'll see how that goes forward from there. Ben Olsen was uh, dismissive of, of questions about that afterwards. Still some work to do for DC United. They are winless in the first two games of the season. A couple more things before we go. I want to make sure you log on and vote for the AT&T Goal of the Week. You can log on at MLSsoccer.com and find out all the different ways to vote. And the latest edition of Extra Time Radio will be up on Monday. You mentioned David Estrada from Seattle. We're going to talk to him, the hat trick hero for the Seattle Sounders. You can find that on iTunes and Buzzsprout. And for all the latest headlines in MLS, log on to MLSsoccer.com.